Alright my beautiful family, I'm back, Alex Rodriguez here, Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Uh, my last video was about the occult in Islam. So now I'm going to a good video talking about the angels, 10 surprise type of angels in Islam. So I believe this is gonna be nice and let's watch this together, thanks for everything, I love you all, yalla. Yalla, because it's getting very, very hot here, and this will be my last reaction. In theology, there are many types of intelligent beings beyond just humans, and one of those types of beings are known as angels. And just like humans, angels have all sorts of job descriptions and roles. So welcome back to another exciting episode of FTD Facts, and I found different types of angels in Islam, and in this video I'll be highlighting roles that angels have been assigned, and not necessarily highlighting specific angels. So starting at number 10, we have the Archangel. So an Archangel is a superior or a higher ranking angel and it oh my god I got one in my arm right here see right here and I have another one down here I know it's haram but uh, I made before um, knowing and started my journey on Islam so Allah will forgive me I know in Islam, the archangels that are specifically mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah are as follows. We have Jibra'il, that's the archangel responsible for communicating the messages from God to the prophets. There's Mikael, responsible for the forces of nature and ensuring that it rains and things like that. Israfil is the archangel that will blow the trumpet to announce the day of the resurrection. And it's said that Israfil actually has the trumpet at his lips just waiting for the command from God. Azrael, he's the angel of death. Malik is the angel of hellfire. And Ridwan is the angel of paradise or heaven. But getting into some other types of angels, next up are the guardian angels. So what's a guardian angel? Well, these are the angels that have a job description of just protecting protecting and guiding individuals. They also can protect groups of people as well as even countries. Now every single person has two guardian angels, one in the front of them and one behind them. However, that's what I got down here. Look, this one. Can you see it? Yeah, this one. In actuality, each person is assigned four guardian angels because they take turns, you know? So two of them guard you during the day and the other two guard you during the nighttime. So you always have at least two of them with you. Next up is the Kerimin Katabin. These are the recording angels. Mm. Now there are two recording angels mentioned called Rakib and Atib, and they record everything that people do. Every single word, every action done by a person. So these angels, they don't mess around at all because you know those naughty things that you do that you know you're not supposed to do and you think like no one is seeing They are there just to write everything that you do. And you do them. Yeah, they record those stuff too. Ishim is next up at number seven. So the Ishim are angels that are said to have the closest relationship to what we as human beings are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. There was an angel made up of half ice and half fire, often portrayed with the name Habib. Now this angel was encountered by the Prophet Muhammad during his night journey in the first heaven. The angel Jibreel told the Prophet Muhammad that this angel offers advice to the believers on earth and actually nice. prays for them. At number six, we have the angels of death. Neziet and Neshitet like are two classes of death angels that are subordinates to Azrael, who is the archangel of death that I mentioned in number 10. Now these angels are responsible for taking the souls of those who pass away. Neziets are ordered to take the lives of unbelievers by force, but that one works a lot, huh? Oh lord. The Neshitets take their life very gently. Now, not much is known about these angels, the Dardaeel, but the Dardaeel, which translates to the journeyers of God, move very quickly and are always Dardaeel. on the lookout. Why? Because they are the angels who are given the task of traveling all around the world, constantly in search of people and groups of people who remember and honor God's name. There's also an angel named Dardaeel that is invoked during exorcism, but I'm not exactly sure if wow. they're 
connected. Zebinia is next, and the Zebinia are known as the forces of hell, and they torment the sinners. They are also called angels of punishment or the guardians of hell, and they are usually identified with the 19 angels of hell that are mentioned in the Quran. In the number three spot, we have the Hamlet al Arsh, and those are the bearers of the throne. Now, these angels are usually portrayed in an animal like form because they are described as looking like different creatures such as an eagle, a bull, a lion, and a human all together somehow. In other hadiths, they are described as having six wings and four faces. Now if you're familiar with the Bible, these angels are comparable to the seraphim found in the book of Isaiah and Revelation right. in the Bible. And actually, you know what? Let's take a look at the seraphim in Islam next. So seraphim means fiery one or fiery serpent depending on the context. They're mentioned in the hadith in a conversation between the Prophet Muhammad and God during his night journey. Sometimes the archangels Jibreel and Israfil are identified as being seraphim as well. In one Islamic narration about angels that were commanded to bow before Adam, Iblis is said to have refused to bow because he was a seraph himself made from fire and was better than Adam. And the final group of angels to look at are the cherubim. So the cherubim are mentioned in Islamic traditions, however they're not mentioned in the Quran. The cherubim continuously praise God and they're described as being bright because none of the other lower angels can even look upon them. The cherubim are so bright that the light from one of them can fill the entire earth. Wow. And in Islam, when Moses asked God to show his face to him, God made one of the cherubim shine on the mountain where Moses was and it broke it to pieces. And in this tradition, God was assuring Moses that since he couldn't even handle looking at a cherub, how does he expect to handle looking at God? Yeah, we watched this before, right? That was incredible himself directly. Alright guys, so that's all I have in this episode on the 10 types of angels in Islam. Now, I'd like to know, regardless of if you're Muslim or not, have you heard of any of these angels or stories or beliefs of any of these types of angels? Sound off below in the comment section. I'm very interested to read what you guys have to say. Now, if you made it this far, here's another video. Family, that was nice. That was quick, but that was nice. I said that the angel of death works, must be work a lot, but they all work a lot, they never stop, so uh, I say that because a lot of people dying every single day and it's just crazy for everything that we're going through in the world, so that's why I said uh, he worked a lot, but we you know I prefer the good ones. I want to be away from the, the death, angel of death, always. <laughs> Thanks so much, that was quick and nice. I learned a few things here, and I hope you guys will learn too, if you didn't watch this yet. Thanks so much, I love you all. God bless you all, see you guys next time.